looking to build a fire and you don't know what to build it with, or you're gonna smoke some meat and you don't know what to use, hey folks, we're talking some good hardwood stuff here. Whether it be lump or real, we got you covered. I'm gonna tell you what you need to do to make every trip a success. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp. And you know, I get a lot of questions all the time, but more when it's becoming this time of year. What time of year is that? Grilling season is here, folks. Yeah, I grill all year round, but hey, when it goes to warming up, you get in there May and June, people wanna get out in that backyard and let's burn some wood. But let's talk about fuel. What kind of fuel are we gonna use? Well, how are we gonna get the heat? How are we gonna get the flavor? Do we need some kind of different wood if we're baking in a Dutch oven? Folks, I have got you covered with all this and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks and it will be entertaining as well. So stick around, we're gonna smoke and burn some wood. So folks, I'm just gonna tell you right off the top of the bat because hey, it's what I know. And that is, if you're wanting to use briquettes, this video probably ain't for you. I do not use them, I do not like them. I don't even wanna see them in a store when I walk by. They are made of so many foreign things that holds all that together. Y'all know me, I'm old fashioned. I think some folks refer to me as a stick burner. Yeah, I've burned a lot of sticks in my life and a lot of wood. So folks, let's talk about hardwood. What's best to get that heat with, that grilling, that baking temperature. Hey, hardwood is the best thing you can use because it's gonna make a hardier coal, it's gonna make a hotter coal that lasts a long time. And that's what we're after. Now, there's softwoods out there and I've had to burn some of them, but you talk about a pine tree. They got resin in them, they're soft as they can be, and when you burn them, first of all, you're getting a lot of smoke that does you no good, has a bad flavor, and it burns up really quick. But also, I've had to burn some of that stuff called cottonwood. It's got a lot of bark around it and a lot of pulp, but very little wood consistency in there, so it's not really good. So let's talk about what we got, and I have it with a great abundance, that is mesquite. It is a great hardwood. It lasts a long time. It makes you a good hardy coal. Then we have some oak. We have some hickory, we have some pecan, good hard wood. Think of stuff that they might make furniture with, but hang on, I don't want you to go out there and cut the, label, the table off your legs. That ain't right. I'm talking about getting you a good hard wood. It's gonna always perform well for you. So let's talk about cooking in a Dutch oven, and we need us some good hardwood coals, folks. We do, something that's gonna maintain that heat that we're not having to refire that oven over and over and over again to get something done and hardwood will do that for you. Now, I'm still going back to mesquite because that's what we have mostly here, but I have used a lot of oak I have. It burns really well. But remember, when we're cooking something with a Dutch oven, we're not flavoring smoke, we're just using it as a heat source. So folks, I have burnt a lot of cedar posts out there on them ranches. I have burnt some bodark trees, which are also known as hedge or Osage orange, but they are a snap crackle fire, and man, they are lively. And guess what else? Me and Cookie have used it many times, we have. Who was Cookie? I get that question a lot. He was the old cook driving the wagon, going down the trail so many times. And what do we gather up? Cow chips, buffalo chips. Good dry ones, don't get a fresh one. But them things will burn, they will make a coal. You gotta have a lot of them. But folks, they hardly ever burn out. Now, let's talk about grilling and smoking to get that flavor and that aroma of that smoke that's drifting over that good steak that we got on there. Or say it's a fish, or say it's even a piece of turkey or chicken. I do like to mix mesquite and oak together. It is really good for some beef and pork both. But folks, there's so many other things that you can change this up. Say we're cooking some chicken. Hey, anything that's got some feathers or some fins on it, I'm probably gonna try to throw me in some fruit wood. What are we talking? I'm talking like apple, cherry, peach, something like that to pair with this that we can get that aroma of that smoke flowing around. And you may even wanna soak some of these chunks of wood if you're trying to get a longer smoking flavor out of it where it don't just burn up so quick. Now, if say you were just like smoking some cheese or wanting some instant smoke, that's when I'd use the chips versus the chunks. Little hickory chips are just like little shavings that they've just peeled off for little pieces. Now you can throw them in a little old dab of smoker there and they'll make smoke nearly instantly. Now they do last longer if you soak them a while. Now the chunks, and I have got me some big old chunks of apple wood, cherry wood, peach wood, stuff like that. And you can use that strictly as your heat source if you want because it will burn, it will make a hot coal, and that'll be a good smoky flavor that you're getting. So you're telling me you live someplace where you can't go cut the tree down. I understand you. And you can't just go out there and pick up some from the neighbor. 
Well, folks, they sell this stuff called hardwood lump charcoal. Now, it's not a briquette. This is hardwood that's been burnt down. You can get it at a number of places. I mean, Amazon even get it. You can get it from them. Home Depots, Bass Pro Shops, stuff like that, they all gonna have this, and there are a lot of different brands out there. You know, I have used a lot of sacks of hardwood lump through the years because I've been in places to where they say, hey, you cannot have a live fire. Hardwood lump is not considered live fire that's burning, just going everywhere. Now, depending too on what this bag contains, if it's a lot of really hardy chunks or it's got quite a few of them crumbs, I can usually get one of them sacks to make me two cookings in a Dutch oven. That's top and bottom on two ovens. But folks, you need to remember to get extra. You can't make this stuff just like that. It ain't gonna happen. So if you're thinking one is enough, get two so you'll have a plenty. Same thing with the grill. If you're grilling with that stuff, always buy one more sack than I think I need. So let's talk about starting this fire, folks. Hardwood or hardwood lump. Number one thing to do, if I see you with some of that lighter fluid in your hand, I am gonna come over and I'm gonna let the dude and the beaky have a speaking to you because that stuff is not good for you. I'm either gonna use a big old propane torch and you've seen me use it many times, or if you've got one of them chimneys, you can shore stuff that paper up in there and get that hardwood lump started that way. Now it is really nice if you don't have one of them big torches and you've got a chimney that you can start you some lump, but then you're gonna burn regular hardwood, get you some of that to go in, put it in there, then put your wood. Remember, stack that wood to where you get some airflow in there when you're first starting. It'll make that fire catch anymore. So on this hardwood, folks, if you're using it, first of all, what are you cooking? How much time you got before you even start cooking? You know, you can start with something like this and put it in there and let it burn down to make a coal as you go along. Or if you're using a big old smoker, you can put some great big old stumps in there and just let it smoke plumb through the night. But when you're having to replenish that grill and you started out with something like that, throw you some littler stuff in there as you go along to maintain that heat and that level of coal that you need to either bake with or grill with. Now, all wood is gonna make a different coal. I don't care if it's hardwood lump or if it's really hard wood. It ain't gonna make no difference. It's gonna make a different size and it's gonna last a certain amount of time. Now, softer the wood, the flakier the coal, the less it's gonna make. Now, I have noticed that with a lot of hardwood oak that I use, it is a thinner piece. It's not a big around piece like you would get with a mesquite or something like that. So it's gonna ash out a little quicker. It's gonna get a little flakier than you will get with a bigger piece of wood, whether it be hardwood or lump. You know, when we're talking about burning cedar post on them ranches, and I burn a lot of them, and some of them posts would be like that, it's a pretty good blast of heat right there at the first and see it fades out. But it'll bust off like in rings and just burn that away and you'll get little coals. They're hot. Now they don't last a long time, but you do remember that. Cedar wood's gonna be that away. Now I get a lot of questions. People ask me, hey Kent, have you used any alder wood to smoke with? Folks, I wished I had some to try because I know a lot of people who've always told me, Ain't nothing better than get some good alder to smoke some fish with or something like that. Now, smoke is going to give you different flavors. There are things you need to stay away from that you ain't going to smoke with, okay? And that is something that has a lot of sap to it, a lot of oil to it, but also bad taste. Cedar, bodark, something like that. Eucalyptus, oh my gosh. Be like trying to barbecue the Vicks bottle, it will. Stay away from that oily stuff. Well, we thank you. We hope you enjoyed this little episode about some cooking wood, some smoking wood as we sit here by Old Bertha and let her warm my backside. But as always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and veterans who have kept that old flag flying above the camp. But remember folks, we have so much to be thankful for at this time. But if you need some more information about this and you can't find it, we'll have you a link down there below. But guess what? The new cookbook, Faith, Family, and the Feast, it's got a section on woods, the temperature, the smoke, the coal. Hey, we got you covered. So if you ain't got one, it's time for a commercial. www.kentrollins.com. It'll get you right there. You can buy you one. But we do appreciate it very much, each one of you taking time out of your busy day to just visit with us. We lift you up in prayer and in thought, and to us, y'all are family, so I'll see you down the I wanna burn some wood and smoke some meat trail. Or add you some more briquettes, not yeah, yeah. You got star in there now? Yeah. As always, that's come off hard. I believe I'll do that again. <laughs>